Mark Jacoby is now joining. It's now five. He is p. now joining. And we will begin our community. Mary Greger. We will is begin now joining application in the order of the agenda. This is a virtual public meeting, so we ask for everyone's patience. Um, and it also is a statutory public meeting. The committee will make their decision following each application. Anyone interested in the decision must notify the secretary treasurer Sherry Mott. Please list the file number and your full name and mailing address. The decisions are final if there are no appeals 20 days after the committee's decision. Anyone wish, wishing to speak regarding an application will be given the opportunity to do so. I will ask that any member of the public that wishes to speak to please state your name for the record. And I will let you know when it's time for you to speak. I would also like to remind everyone to remain muted unless you are speaking. And planning staff will be presenting the reports and they're available to answer any questions of the committee or the public. And I'm going to start with a roll call for the committee. Adam. Adam, okay, Alan. Yeah, present. Lisa. Okay. Marcel. And Rudy. Yes. Okay. Do you know if Adam's coming? Okay. Okay. The first order of business is to determine if any of the committee members have any disclosures of interest when considering any of the applications we will be dealing with today. Okay. So are there any disclosures of interest? Okay. I'm not hearing any. All committee members should have received and read the minutes of the April 20th meeting. Are there any errors or omissions? Okay. I have a resolution before me to approve the minutes. Could I have a member of the committee move that recommendation? Alan moves approval of the minutes. I actually got Marcel. He's here and he put his hand up. So will you Alan second also. Alan? Sure thing, yeah. Okay. Okay, all in favor of approval? Adam, are you there? Okay, Alan? Yep. Marcel and Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor, so the minutes are approved. Okay. So the first application is file number ANPL 2021389. It's for 401 Cedar Drive in Turkey Point, and the owner applicant is Chris Nelson, and I'll ask staff to give the report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to renovate a boathouse which requires relief of 3.35 meters from the maximum height to the boathouse of 5 meters. 124 square meters to the maximum total usable floor area of 56 square meters for a boathouse. 80 square meters to the maximum total usable floor area of 100 square meters for an accessory structure to, to permit a usable floor area of 100 square, sorry, 180 square meters. And 1.7% relief from the maximum printed lot coverage of 10% for accessory structures for a total lot coverage of 11.7%. These subject lands are located at the south end of Cedar Drive. South of Reserve Street. Dave Aiken. Of the subject Delhi Legion. The zero point is now meters. joining. It's approximately 33 meters of frontage on Cedar Mary Dreger. The subject is now exiting. By a residence, accessory structure, and existing boathouse. The lands are designated and zoned resort residential. Are within the resort area of Turkey Point and within the Lake Erie flooding hazard boundary, which is in the Long Point Region Conservation Authority's regulation area. The LPRCA has submitted a comment advising the proposed application may not be consistent with Section 3.1 of the Provincial Policy Statement. Based on the information provided in the application, this is their comment. It is unclear what the second story will be used as, as it has the potential to be turned into habitable space. 
The LPRC also outlined requirements to obtain a permit and concluded the application as proposed is not consistent with the provincial policy statement and Ontario regulation 78 slash 06. So the LPRC cannot support the application as submitted. Regarding official plan policy, the Lakeshore Special Policy Area states development within the resort areas shall respect and reinforce the existing character of the community and surrounding landscape through compatibly scaled infill development and vacation home redevelopment where appropriate. The community design guidelines for the Lakeshore Special Policy Area specify some key features of Turkey Point. It highlights that rustic single story cottages are being incrementally replaced by large cottages that maximize a lot width and impact the landscape character of resort communities. The section also has an image of what canal cottages uh, like the subject lands may look like. And this highlights the general scale of the landscape wherein boat houses are smaller structures which would not compromise views of the canals. So in the opinion of staff, the development will have the effect of introducing the size and scale which mirrors that of the existing vacation home, consequently impacting views and neighborhood character. Therefore, it is the opinion of staff that the subject application poses a height which does not meet the intent of the community design guidelines of the Lakeshore Special Policy Area Secondary Plan or the resort area of uh, Turkey Point uh, and doesn't meet the intent of the official plan. Regarding the zoning bylaw, sorry, zoning bylaw, the proposal seeks relief from different provisions, some of which are outlined in multiple sections of the zoning bylaw. So in this case, law coverage in the usable floor area. When considering the justification, the built form, scale proposal, it is the community staff that this does not constitute minor relief or meet the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. So in conclusion, it's the community staff, the proposal does not meet the protest from the variance and recommend refusal. Thank you. Hey, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay, no questions for staff. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay, is there an applicant or agent on the line with any additional information to add? Uh, yes, there is. Sorry, could you state your name? Uh, yes, it's uh, Bram uh, Vandenhuvel. My name is, or sorry, I'm with Stonecrest Engineering, and uh, I've been working with the owner on this file and county staff. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, thanks. Um, first of all, to the county staff and the planner for preparing this report. Uh, we appreciate all uh, everyone's help. Um, it's taken a little bit of effort and a few deferrals to kind of dive deep into the some of the definitions and get our heads wrapped around this um, particular project. A few things um, that I'd like to point out to the committee um, uh, that might just help uh, in terms of some clarification um, is that the um, the upper space that we're proposing is not uh, going to be pr primarily for mechanical space, but for outdoor storage of like outdoor furniture and other boathouse uh, related storage uh, for the winter seasons. Um, storage is a permitted use and that's something that the clients wish to pursue and they do understand habitable space is not permitted. Um, and so we've found that many existing um, boathouses in the neighborhood um, exhibit that kind of use. Um, and and, and that, that was sort of our, 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 our uh, just wanted to speak to that. The, the other item, um, that sort of supports that is in some of the pictures of this particular um, boathouse um, by the current owner having to temporarily store some of this outdoor furniture outside and getting this material inside is uh, is one of the reasons for that upper space. Um, a lot of this uh, discussion has stemmed from the interpretation of, of, of the applicable definitions. Um, and so what we're looking is is the 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 permitted usable area specifically um, is is something that um, these numbers are, are are depicted as a higher value because um, or as it stands right now uh, the upper area is included in this calculation um, and that's simply because the current zoning bylaws don't recognize um, that kind of um, uh, occasional use. Uh, in that way. So for those reasons, the um, 
the calculations uh, may tip more towards um, higher values in that regard. Um, typically, um, permitted uses that, that are allowed for in zoning and combination, what we work with through with the Ontario Building Code are regularly applied to a lot of our projects that we're involved with. And then it's the owner's responsibility, of course, to know the limitations of how that space is to be used. Um, and we work with many clients in that sort of arrangement. Um, in terms of the height, um, this will seem a bit more minor in nature when we look at the recognized allowance of a residential accessory structure, for example, in this rural zoned um, property uh, that is allowed uh, to be seven meters, for example. Currently, boat houses are capped at five meters. And um, and so in recognition of that, it, it, you know, the difference between between those heights will seem um, less uh, uh, less of a, an offset. Um, so uh, it, we're thinking that that proposed height is minor in, in nature, and that's the reason for that is just to accommodate a larger boat, um, ac accommodate solar panels on the proposed roof, allow for the rising water levels, um, and it'll still be within or lower than the typical nearby surrounding cottages and other boat houses in the area. Um, and and yeah, that's one point we wanted to make. And then uh, this particular lot itself is one of the larger lots actually. Um, and so as you can see on some of the pictures, right, you can clearly see that the boathouse itself is not overly large. Um, the boathouse itself actually is going to remain existing. We intend to renovate it. Realistically, the only thing we are doing is raising the roof on this and getting it off the seawall to create a more stable um, um, structure, if you will. Um, so that that that's something else that may uh, benefit um, the committee. Um, so, you know, when you look at just the ground area of this particular boathouse, you can see that it is relatively um, in line or smaller than the surrounding boathouses in that area. Um, and yeah, I just hope that that sort of provides a few um, additional um, points that uh, that that can be considered um, for um, for approval of a parents request. Uh, I'm I'm available to answer you know any additional questions. Um, I know that you have a busy agenda. There there's a lot more to unpack here through the definitions and for the sake of time, um, I think everyone will appreciate um, that uh, we can perhaps speak to any individual questions if that's helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we can. We can leave it at that, and um, I'm 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 available to uh, to try and answer any additional questions that any committee member may have. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions? Have any the agent. Yeah, I do. Um, Alan here. So, I understand that uh, you know we're. Our, the boathouses are, are set at five meters. In the past, a number of times in the Turkey Point or um, the Long Point area, we have approved seven meter um, boathouses. Um, I'm fine with a seven meter boathouse, but here you're looking for 8.35, and I um, really couldn't support that height uh, on this project, but could you work with a seven meter height in this project yourself? Yeah, we yeah, that's a, that, and that's a very fair question. You know, we we had looked at that, um, of mm -hmm. course. I think with this particular instance and the um, the size of the boat and some of the specifics on this job, uh, we tried to to pinpoint it to an exact number as to what was going to work for the client, um, and that's how we derived at the 8.35 meters. Um, you, you know, we we understand, um, and I shared this with the committee. Uh, provided just some other examples of other boat houses and some pictures of other boat houses in the area that that um, had an equivalent um, height, uh, uh, you know, that we're looking for. So, um, you know, that that's the reason behind this because otherwise the the current um, boat house as it sits, um, you, you know, it, it is it is similar in nature of that it wouldn't accommodate the uh, you know the boat and the other items that this client is looking to. Um, it, it, it looking to integrate in this into this space. Okay, so 
And then going back to the footprint of the um, the boathouse, it would base it would essentially stay as it is. Is that what you're saying? It's going to be very similar. Yeah, we're actually not increasing this in 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 area very much. Um, it, you know, and um, there really isn't any other re residential accessory structure on this property. Um, and so residential, like let's say this was a residential accessory structure, not a boathouse. Immediately, uh, we would be allowed seven meters. And so it, it's not, um, it's, we're about four or five feet more, right, at the, um, um, and so that's, that's what we're hoping for. Um, so yeah, that's, it, there really isn't really much else that can happen on this property, as you can see, right? Um, there really isn't room to grow other than height. Okay, thanks. I'll let my other committee members chime in. Um, again, I don't think I could support 8.35 meters, but uh, seven I would be all okay with, but I'll uh, hear from the other committee members in the meantime. Marcel, go ahead. Is, that, is that one of the issues, uh, the storage area, is that, are we sure that no one's going to live up there or is going to be that one of the issues? Okay, planning staff can answer that. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I, I think it, it's just a risk that comes with something of this size and height. Um, there is some design aspects that pointed towards the potential. Uh, again, the applicant is stating what it's meant to be. I don't want to say that's not true. It's just something that we've evaluated in the past is the risk. Um, and it seems to be based on the LPRCA's comment, something that they're also considering as well. So because it's in the flooding area, it's something that they consider every time they see accessory structures in this area, the potential for habitability. It's uh, Chris Nelson. Can anybody hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, I can speak uh, directly to the committee and everybody uh, listening. Uh, the, the intention uh, for the height is not to have a living space. It's for storage. And the the request for the additional height for the that we are that I'm that I'm looking for is mostly to accommodate the uh, the solar panels. Uh, that I uh, that I want to put on my roof to a uh, part of my my green initiative because I've had them in the past on my other properties, but I don't have it on on my residence now. The uh, the flooding that that has occurred in Turkey Point um, plays havoc with the boat that I have now. Um, when the water levels increased because of the lower height that I have now, my boat actually contacts the the underside of the framing of the boathouse. With that increased height and planning and hoping it's going to alleviate that so it's it's the reason the reasoning that that the uh what i'm getting gaining what i just listened to is the concerns of of a dwelling above the boathouse i have a house that is my house i need storage so uh turkey point uh because of the because of the uh, high water level within the sand levels, um, doesn't accommodate a very large crawl space. And for the most part, they're very damp and not a very good place to store my, my, uh, my corporate papers, as well as my personal items. To that, my outside furniture, I had to actually construct a temporary structure to house them through the winter. And, uh, you know, I did damage to thousands of dollars worth of, of my, uh, my personal belongings. Or this would this would keep it secure. I, mean, I have a question for the planner. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, to the planning staff, um, when you add solar panels to the roof of a structure, does that is that calculation of the solar panel itself is that included in the um, the height limitation, or is it a, an addition? So let's, for example, say this applicant is asking for 8.35. Is that 8.35 period or 8.35 plus any solar panel accessory? I think that's I think I think that's how I want to. If you know what I mean, I'm not sure if you're getting the gist of what I'm getting at. So, so solar panels come to the to to just uh, to the maximum to the peak. I understand that. I'm just asking about. Oh, I'd say if it uh, increases the if it increases the overall height, 
of the approved um, um, the approved application. So um, this question for the planning staff, please. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, the definition of height is for the, the peak of the roof. Uh, so we wouldn't, as far as I understand, count the solar panels as part of that calculation. Um, my memory serves me correctly. I, I don't know if we saw the solar panels in the proposal, but I could be wrong. Uh, but it, it didn't wasn't a part of the evaluation. And just one last point, I, I do want to stress it's it's not just the height that the planning staff is one of the reasons for refusal. It's cumulatively we're looking at a size and scale for the resort area of Turkey Point when evaluating across the zoning bylaw and the official plan that we're finding it doesn't meet the intention of those two policies and isn't appropriate in addition to the Long Point Region's comment. Thank you. OK, just a couple comments from me. Um, I just want to remind the committee that in September, it was actually this September 3rd Council and Committee meeting in 2019. At the request of this committee, I did a deputation to Council requesting that the Council increase or direct staff to increase the maximum permitted building height for accessory uses to residential uses in the resort residential zone. And our request was um, to increase from five meters to seven meters. At the time of the deputation, I believe that it was the intention of the committee that boathouses would be included as they are listed as accessory uses in the zoning bylaw. However, for whatever reason, um, accessory structures were increased, but boathouses were overlooked. Um, since then, I have raised the issue um, with council and it's my understanding that staff will be looking at this um, for the fall update of the zoning bylaw. And at the time the recommendation was made from five meters to seven meters because that was the height that we were getting most of the requests for. Um, so I feel um, seven meters, my opinion, that if the applicant was asking for seven meters, it would be something that we could approve. Um, the 8.35 meters is just a little bit over that. Um, however, uh, I was, um, I wanted to go back and look at some of the decisions we had made, but the minutes are not accessible on our website, and um, I haven't, um, I haven't been able to obtain the minutes at, at, to date. So at this time, if the applicant would be satisfied with a seven meter um, height increase, I would be prepared to support that. So I'm going to throw that out to the applicant. Um, are you willing to work within seven meters as opposed to 8.35? So I think um, I'll let, I want, because Chris is on this call, I, I want to kind of ask that to him as well. Um, Chris, what are your thoughts on the seven meters? Well, it's, uh, it's, definitely better than what I have now, which is just slightly over five. Um, however, the designs that we had and, and what the layout I had for for our photovoltaics were to to maximize that height. That's where we come up with the numbers. Um, I'm a little bit you know, disappointed because I, there are a lot of very tall boathouses in Turkey Point. And I really don't want to feel like I'm being uh, centered out that they can, but I can't. You know, it's not not want to say it's discriminate discrimination, but it just it seems like the the committee has passed these before, or they were built before uh, and allowed before, but mine can't be. Well, my comment to that would be: this committee has been pretty consistent 
in the in the resort residential areas of Long Point and Turkey Point in a, in um, approving seven meters uh, applications. Now, whether the pr a previous committee of adjustment in past years um, before this this term of this committee, which goes back coming up three and a half years now, um, if they apply, if they approved something higher than that to eight meters or eight and a half meters, I can't speak to that because I was not on the committee at that time. But I think this committee, as it sits now, has been pretty consistent in a seven meter ruling. So. Uh, yeah, I think my thoughts are on on for today because it's taken a lot of effort to get to this point and 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 a few deferrals. Um, I think that, you know, we want the time to be put towards um, something productive. And I think uh, whatever maximum height that the committee is comfortable with, if, even if that's seven and a half or eight meters, anything that we can um, obtain in height is going to help me and my design and 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 support um, the owner's um, wishes for for the the boat size and the uh, photovoltaics. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to re um, reiterate to the um, owner that I did attempt to go back and review. Um, previous decisions with regards to boat houses in Turkey Point and um, unfortunately I wasn't able to get copies of the minutes of those meetings and I do know that when we did make the recommendation to council we recommended seven feet because that was seven feet I mean sorry mm -hmm. seven meters <laughs> sorry um, seven meters was our recommendation because that was the number that most of the requests that we were getting um, were for seven meters. So, uh, okay, we've heard from staff, we've heard from the agent and the owner, and um, we can go ahead with the decision. Um, and I'll have, right now we have a recommendation from staff that be refused and it's, any further comment or discussion or recommendations from would the committee members? Would the council consider slightly over seven meters? Or is that where you're drawing the line at seven meters? Okay. I'm I'm asking the com a committee member to make a recommendation. I guess there can always be a deferral, but otherwise I, I would stay with the seven meters myself. The applicant would be, you know, wishes a deferral. I guess I would go for that too if he wants to to look and see if there's other wood houses that are higher. Otherwise, I would say I would recommend the seven. I would vote for that. Okay. Can we accept the seven? And re and as Bram redraws everything up, and if it finds out where seven works, then we're okay. And if it's slightly above seven, are we okay with that as well? No, you don't. You don't get. You don't get both ways. You get. You get what we, what we move and what we approve. And if we approve seven meters, you're limited to seven meters, not slightly above or slightly whatever um you, so, you have the opportunity to appeal our decision and that's uh that's your choice we're offering you the opportunity to defer again I, I know you don't we don't like to we don't like to outright refuse applications we would much sooner uh, defer a, an application to give you guys chances to work within the parameters of um of the um the definitions as you say so you can either have, you know, you can either accept a deferral or I'll put a motion on the floor right now. I'm I'm prepared to do that for to approve the application as it is, with the exception to a limit of seven meters um, height restriction. And one of the conditions I would make is that um, the second floor not to be used as a habit habitable space. And that's, that's that motion. Yeah, so 
so Chris, basically, um, you know, if you can defer and then have the um, the members look into, you know, properties like um, 372 Cedar, where there is a nine meter high boathouse or other boathouses potentially that are higher and then and then make a decision a month from now or um, or accept the seven meter limitation now. Would the count, but okay, well, let's look at it this way. If seven meters is going to be the max height, then seven meters is the max height. I accept that if that's what it is. But if the if the, if we can show that the other the other ones are above seven meters, would the council reconsider above seven meters? If the we answer is no, if the answer is no, then we stayed seven meters and we'll redesign. In order to do that, we would need to defer your application. So if you want to defer it another month, um, I I can review our previous decisions and uh, see if it's um, what our consistent decision has been. Or you can approve it tonight at seven meters. Graham, can you redesign me at seven meters? I can certainly work with with uh, with with what I have to work with. Um, so I don't have any issue with that. OK, then let's do that. So yeah. again, I'll, I'll put forward a motion to approve this application with a height limitation of seven meters and a, and a restriction and a, a condition of uh, no occupancy to the uh, to the upper floor. That's fine. Except for storage. Is there a member of the committee that will second that uh, propose that recommendation? Second that. OK, Marcel. OK, all in favor? Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. And myself? Yes. So that application has been approved um, with a restriction of seven meters to the height. And um, the resident residential use is not permitted on the second story. Okay, writing that down. The next application is file number ANPL 2022029. It's for 125 Ordnance Ave in Turkey Point. The applicant is Darlene Vanderpool, and I'll ask staff to give the uh, report. We're just having some tech technical difficulties here, so bear with us. Testing. Okay, thank you. Through the chair. Apologies, everyone. 
An application has been received for the reconstruction of an existing boathouse requiring relief of two meters, the maximum height of five meters for a boathouse. 4.5% from the maximum permitted lot coverage for an accessory structure of 10% to permit a coverage of 14.5%. 299.3 square meters, the maximum permitted usable floor area of 56 square meters for a boathouse. And 255.3 square meters to the maximum permitted usable floor area for accessory structure to permit a usable floor area of 355.3 square meters. And lastly, 2.5 meters from the minimum front yard setback of six meters to permit a front yard setback of 3.5 meters. Uh, the subject lands are located southwest of the intersection of Ordnance Avenue and Reserve Street in the resort area of Turkey Point. The area of the subject lands is approximately 1,250 square meters or 0 0.3 acres with approximately 15 meters frontage on Ordnance Avenue. The subject lands are occupied by a vacation home and an accessory structure which will be replaced by the proposed boathouse. So similar to the previous application we discussed, to keep things brief, um, comparatively, we're looking at a proposal that is less tall. Um, it has a, a higher lot coverage and a larger usable floor area for a lot that's rough. Testing, right? Uh, like the previous application, it is evaluated through the same policies. So we're looking at the zoning bylaw and official plan regarding resort residential designation and zone, as well as the resort area of Turkey Point in the Lakeshore Special Policy Area. Similar to the previous application, the Long Point Region Conservation Authority has also provided a comment stating that based on the information provided, there is the potential to convert the large second story into habitable space in the future. The outlined requirements to obtain a permit and concluded the application is proposed as proposed is not consistent with the PPS and OREG 178-06, and the LPRC concluded they could not support the application as submitted. For the reasons we've discussed in the previous application, uh, planning staff evaluated and determined that it does not meet the intent and purpose of the official plan, the Lakeshore Special Policy Area, or the zoning bylaw. Uh, it doesn't represent an appropriate development for the proposed location and does not constitute constitute a minor release in the zoning bylaw and therefore recommend for refusal. Thank you. Thank you. OK, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? I do have a couple questions, actually. So. Um, on page two of the report, the first paragraph, it says um, the subject lands are occupied by vacation home, 100 square meters, resulting in lot coverage of approximately 8.6% and an accessory structure, which will be replaced by the proposed boathouse. Well, it actually isn't just an accessory structure, it's an existing accessory residential structure to, re to be replaced by the proposed boathouse and accessory residential structure. Is that correct? I can answer that if I may. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, it's at uh, Bram at Stonecrest again. I was involved with this project as well. So yeah, that's a very, um, a very good observation on this project. We actually have, two, we're actually combining two residential um, accessory uses into one building, and you know, to be honest, this has definitely stretched the um, definitions, and and there is just really no prescriptive recognition of when you do something like this. And so we've got a residential accessory structure, essentially a garage in combination with a boathouse. And as you can see by, um, you know, the, 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 the area um, on that depicted picture, um, we're actually um, asking for a very similar size for the, the garage portion. And um, then we're covering the existing boat slip uh, with, with an enclosed area. Um, you know, there's more that I can say 
that I'd like to say um, for this project specifically, but just to kind of um, address this question in the moment. Thank you. Um, OK, and then for planning staff um, on page four, the second paragraph, it says section 7.6.2 B states that a replacement of existing buildings or structures, repairs and minor additions to existing buildings or structures and accessory uses may be permitted. So. That goes back to my earlier question. According to the map attached, it shows that the. Um, there is an existing residential accessory structure already there. And they're replacing that, so that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. They're replacing what's existing and expanding it with a new okay. kind of type of development. Yep. OK, and then. So then down to the. Um, well, the next page, it says further. The proposed deck doorway and stairway is a design often associated with providing access for habitable space which it's determined that they're replacing what's there, which is actually an existing residential accessory structure. Is that correct? I right, may clarify through the chair. Do you mean an existing ADU? No. So through the chair, I think that comment in the report is meant to signify. So there is an existing residential accessory structure on site. They are essentially replacing it, but it's a brand new build and it's a larger building. So it's not a replacement as one would say is similar to like a non conforming use. It's essentially a brand new accessory structure. That is to Bram's point, combining the boathouse and the comments about the deck, the staircase um, and the other piece you mentioned is that's actually in connection to the second story and it's an addition to the space for the new building. So I, I see where you're going in terms of it, like replacing an existing building, but it's essentially a brand new building, um, which we have to classify as an accessory to residential structure. Okay. Because they're combining it, it's an added complication because we have separate floor areas. Boat right. And an accessory structure, although a boathouse, similar to an accessory residential unit, is still kind of combined in that overall usable floor area for right. an accessory residential building. So that's why it kind of gets confusing because they've connected them. Uh, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it kind of does, but it does state that section 7.6.2B um, states and minor additions to existing buildings or structures. So if they're they're kind of replacing the use, to me it's all one and the same. Even though it's a new structure, they're replacing the structure maybe with a minor addition or increase. No, that's not. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, Jen, just for adding some context uh, through the chair. It's a it's a good question. I, I think the intent of me including the policy there is just um, highlighting one like. I wouldn't personally see it as a replacement. I think it's an expansion, but also just noting like it is. It is kind of a replacement, but it's growing, but also that it's needs to ensure that the construction uh, meets the requirements of the Conservation Authority. So like the previous question, the LPRCA has mentioned, some requirements that they want to. Right, yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, so. Sorry, sorry may I just something? Yeah, go ahead. This thing. And to Tana's point, it's also not a minor expansion or addition. So even if you see it as a replacement and minor expansions and additions are permitted, um, that their request is not minor, even in consideration of what's currently on site. OK, thank you. And then the other question I have is. Um, on page five again, kind of at the bottom paragraph, it says we're seeking a maximum lot coverage of 14.5% for an accessory structure. But the. Um, the map. Where did I see that? Sorry. I saw somewhere. 
that it, oh yeah on the map it says proposed lot coverage for the accessory structure is 13.7 so it's slightly less than what the report says to the chair um it could be an error through the gis mapping but we did work with the zoning administrator just to make sure that the lot coverage was calculated correctly so i can check that for you okay. thank you okay does the any other committee members have any questions for planning staff? No questions. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? OK, hey, and is there an applicant or agent on the line with any additional information to add? Uh, yes, I've. I'll try not to repeat too much of what I repeated on the last one. Um, so yeah, out, um, outdoor furniture storage for the upstairs uh, we, with storage being a permitted use. The biggest um, the biggest item to zero in on is that is there is really no recognition of what to do when you combine um, a garage and a boathouse. Uh, and, and that's been an ongoing struggle and um, this is the reason why we deferred the application um, and there's still a lot of unanswered questions in that regard. And so uh, what we what we essentially have is a combined residential accessory structure with a boathouse. Each has its own restrictions in the zoning bylaw, but there is no specific prescriptive requirements in the bylaw for what what you do in this sort of instance. So the current interpretation may be more conservative. Um, and so we're trying to um, establish, um, uh, you know, what the committee can do to help us in this instance. Um, if we looked at um, lot um, coverage on this, it's a, it's a, it is a larger lot. And um, so uh, we are looking to create a, a, a total building that's similar in size to the building uh, to the south of this property. Um, and and so it's in line with other um, with other properties in Turkey Point, especially when you look at those that have a separate um, garage or a garage attached to a house and then a separate boat house in that sense. Um, and so that sort of was our struggle through this particular um, project. Um, and then, you know, we're asking for a fairly much like the, the front front yard setback is a pretty straightforward request. Um, th there are other, of course, uh, properties that are closer to the property line. Um, as well, we we noted that, and then um, I think other than that, um, again, it you know the owner is aware of the limitations for the upstairs. This one does not. Um, uh, this one is is at the seven meter threshold for height, so that's not an issue on this one. And so yeah, the usable floor area is just an embellished sort of value at this point. Um, it it just doesn't present well uh, because of. The unique scenario, and so we just wanted to raise a little bit of awareness to that, and um, and yeah, that's that's aside from some other you know examples I provided earlier to the committee. Um, it, this is sort of the underlying reasoning of uh, how we came up with this design. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for the agent? OK, we currently have a recommendation from staff for refusal and. Because of the seven meter height. Um, I'm prepared to to um, approve the application just because. It meets what we had requested in our deputation to council previously, so any other discussion from committee members? Again, I would just add the uh, condition that was as we did before that. Um, there would be no. Um, use of the upstairs except for storage, no um, habitable uh, living quarters at all, just storage only. OK. Um, any other discussion from committee members? And just to the um, agent then a question with regards to that. Is it the intent of the applicant to have um, a residential use there? 
No, it, it will be used to like it's going to be used for the garage, right? For 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 vehicles. So uh, there's no there's no intent of that. There's no intent to replace the existing accessory residential use. No, that uh, my apologize if, uh, if I didn't understand that correctly. No, there. So that existing residential accessory use is a garage and and that the proposed is is going to be that as well. In combination with the boathouse, exactly uh, what we uh, described. So you would have residential use. Uh, above the garage. Not uh, no, sorry, I apologize if I misunderstood. So uh, on the main floor level, there will be the boathouse and the garage level and then above will be storage. Only only that's right. That's that's what I want to hear. OK, so I would again, uh, Linda, I would uh, I'd be prepared to move the same uh, motion uh, seven meter limit on the height and uh, a condition that there be the second story with the second floor would uh, use be be for storage only. Okay. Writing that down. OK, so the request is for a seven meter height and. Alan's um, moving a recommendation that we approve that conditional on second story being used for storage only. Do I have a seconder? Rudy seconds. Thank you, Rudy. OK, all in favor, Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Rudy? Yes. OK, and I as well. So that application is approved with that condition. OK, the next application. And this is a combined report. So we have uh, BNPL 2021176. And that is for 190 Last Let Road. The applicant is 2683803 Ontario Inc. And that is combined with ANPL 2021178 and BNPL 2021179 and ANPL 2021180. And ANPL 2021181. I'll ask staff to give that report. I thank you through the chair. So, an application um, has been submitted to sever two lots off the property known as 190 La Salette Road. Um, the subject lands are located in the hamlet of La Salette on the so side of La Salette Road. And um, each of the severances requires a minor variance to. Zone. The lands are designated agricultural, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, are designated hamlet in the official plan and also hamlet residential by the zoning. Um, so to create the, the two additional lots, uh, minor variances are also required. Um, so for the two severed lots, minor variances have been submitted to address the lot area. And then a uh, minor variance application has also been submitted regarding the retained lands to address lot area and lot frontage. Uh, the applicants have submitted a geotechnical report and subject evaluation um, for the retained lands. The um, geotechnical report supports um, the reduced lot area. Um, through the um, circulation process, we have heard from the neighbors. Um, there are a number of concerns from the neighbors about the lots being too small to accommodate a well and a septic system. And there are also concerns that the smaller lots won't be consistent with the character of the hamlet. Um, to this regard, staff have added or recommended a condition that the applicants provide a sketch showing how the lots um, will meet the remaining zoning provisions. Um, in addition to the minor variances that they're seeking so that and to show where the septic systems will be in the well so that we can get an idea of what the actual buildable area is on the lot and see the size of the houses um, that could potentially be built on the properties. 
Um, to this point, uh, I have discussed this with the agent and um, he is uh, okay with that condition. So uh, based on all this, um, staff, are, staff is recommending uh, approval of the consent applications. Uh, so both of them, the NPL 2021-176, and BNPL 2021-179. Um, we do consider them consistent with the PPS um, official plan and the intent of the zoning bylaw, as well as we're recommending approval on the minor variance applications. Um, ANPL 2021-178, ANPL 2021-180, as well as ANPL 2021-181. Um, Thank you, Bill. For any questions. Okay. Does any committee member have any questions for staff? Okay, no questions for staff. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay. Is there an applicant or agent on the line with any additional information to add? Yeah, good evening, and uh, through the chair, Nathan Colomay, a lawyer with Privilege Law Group. Uh, I'm the agent for the applicant uh, and owner of 268303 Ontario Limited. Uh, just quickly, I uh, wanted to thank staff uh, for all their work in helping us to get to this point uh, for you this evening. Uh, with regards to the lot size, um, I believe the conditions um, requested in the approval uh, do uh, meet those concerns. And just as an aside, um, the fact you know it's saying that the proposed lot sizes don't meet uh the nature and character of the hamlet well they're simply not true if you look at gis for la salette i'm looking at lots uh, some of which are less than half the size of the proposed lot so the lots you know are of an appropriate size uh both from uh you know real estate and uh, a technical point of view and they are in keeping with um, the nature and character of La Salette, and also the provincial policy statement, one of its main goals is to support intensification. So rather than taking, you know, agricultural land, we're seeking to provide more housing on existing Hamlet land. So subject to your questions, um, we uh, thank again, staff again uh, for their report and all the work to date. And uh, we ask that you approve um, all the applications. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the agent? OK. We have a recommendation on these um, five applications for approval. So I'm going to ask for a member to move all five and then a seconder for all five, and then we'll just go through them individually and vote on each one separately. OK, so could I have somebody move for approval? OK, I've got Marcel. And a seconder. Rudy seconds. OK, Rudy, thank you. OK, on BNPL 2021-176 for severance. All in favor, Adam? Yes. Alan? Yep. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. And this application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the policies of the Norfolk County official plan regarding the creation of a lot within a hamlet, and meets the intent of the zoning bylaw, and that public input was received and therefore has been considered as part of this application. That's approved. Okay, and I have. Marcel has moved. We're going to be seconded on ANPL 2021178. So, all in favor of approval, Adam? Sorry, yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. <laughs> Next application is 
BNPL 2021179. Marcel has moved, seconded by Rudy. All in favor of approval, Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Yes. And Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. Okay, and the next one, ANPL 2021180. Okay, Marcel has moved for approval. Rudy has seconded. All in favor for approval? Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. And then the last one is ANPL 2021181. That was moved for approval by Marcel, seconded by Rudy. All in favor, Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. So those are all approved. The next application. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, is file number BNPL 2021371. The applicant is Brook Green Group, Inc., care of Paul Ben Bentham. And it's for severance at 65 Norfolk Street in Waterford, and I'll ask staff to get the report. Not hearing anything. No, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> making problems with the mics tonight. Sorry about that. Um, so through the chair, we've received an application uh, to separate a parcel having a frontage of uh, 31.67 meters, a width of 31.91 meters, a depth of 64.17 meters, with an area of um, 2,032 square meters, approximately half an acre and retaining a parcel having an area of 8,627 square meters as the creation of a lot in the urban area of Waterford. So this application was previously deferred in January, if you recall, um, and it was deferred so the applicant and staff could go back and work out some conditions and wait for zoning uh, amendment to be approved on the subject lands. So the subject lands are designated urban residential um, by the official plan and are now newly zoned, which was just approved last night by council to R2 with the holding. The holding provision addresses a number of uh, the conditions that were previously recommended by the development engineering um, department. Uh, so staff feel that this application is supportable and we recommend approval subject to the conditions attached with a couple modifications. So I think we can remove and if the agent um, is agreeable. I think we can remove recommended condition two, three, and five from the list that's attached to the report, um, as these will be addressed through the holding provision from the zoning, which will require a development agreement um, between the applicants and the county. Um, and the other thing I wanted to note, um, as this application was previously deferred, I relied on the previous report that was written, but in terms of the notice um, requirements. We did follow the Planning Act and new signs were posted with today's date and new circulations were circulated to the neighbors. So the dates in the report um, should be updated um, to the same ones um, as the other reports this month. So I just wanted to make those notes available for any questions. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, do any committee members have any questions for planning staff? Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Is there an applicant or agent on the line with any additional information to add? Uh, through the chair, uh, Scott Flandre with uh, G. Douglas Valley Limited, the agent uh, representing this application. Uh, again, just uh, like to thank uh, Norfolk County Planning staff for uh, working through this application with us. Um, look forward to, uh, to bringing this uh, forward uh, uh, for much needed housing uh, along Norfolk Street. 
Thank you. And I just want to confirm uh, with planning staff the conditions to be removed were two, three, and five. Oh. Uh, yes, those are that's correct. Uh, through the chair, um, just maybe consideration as well. Um, the condition number four uh, entrance permits. Um, uh, on the retained parcel, um, I guess for the, the question to the planner, um, is that a satisfaction as we move through that? Um, how does that condition get cleared? So through the chair, we would work with development engineering and I believe you'd have to install at least at a minimum a temporary um, access for the retained lands, just to make sure that it is accessible um for the owner if anything happens to it but that's my understanding for that okay thank you staff have um recommended approval is there a committee member that can uh, move that recommendation uh alan i'll move that thank you alan a seconder adam thank you adam okay all in favor Adam? Yes. Alan? Yeah. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well. So that application is approved. The um, next application is file number. Uh, is this one? Five reports. No? The theft farms? They're individual? Okay. So the next application is file number VNPL 2022071. The applicant is Beth Farms Ginseng Company Limited, and it's for 586 12 Concession Road, North Walsingham, and I'll ask staff to give the report. Uh, thank you. So an application has been received to sever a parcel with a frontage of 63.5 meters, a width of 63.5 meters, a depth of 58.3 meters with an area of 3,198 square meters, uh, retaining a parcel having an area of approximately 49 acres or 19.9 hectares as the severance of a dwelling made surplus through farm amalgamation. So staff did a review. Um, the lands are designated agricultural in the official plan, zoned agricultural in the zoning. Um, we've reviewed the PPS policies, official plan policies, and are satisfied that the requirements are met. Uh, we recommend approval of this application subject to the attached conditions, and staff are available for any questions if you have any. Thank you. Okay, do the committee members have any questions regarding this application for staff? No questions. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dave Rowe, um, the uh, agent for the for the applicant. Thanks, Dave. Uh, what I'd like to uh, say a, a couple of things. Um, since the application was submitted in discussions with my client, uh, he would like to uh, retain the accessory uh, garage that's located behind the house. Um, and that would then necessitate the uh, removal of conditions three and four in the staff uh, recommendation. Uh, other than that, um, uh, we don't foresee any any issues. The, uh, the accessory garage uh, complies with the requirements of the zoning bylaw for accessory buildings, uh, accessory structures for uh, residential uses. Uh, uh, the lot itself is, uh, I think, 1.79 acres, so it's clearly less than, than an acre. Uh, there is a request for a hydro uh, uh, easement that would provide the uh, existing uh, uh, power to the uh, to the agriculture buildings located uh, to the rear of the uh, proposed lot. Um, the uh, house itself 
uh, will utilize a new service uh, off of the concession road. Uh, those are, would be my comments. Uh, through the chair, no, and I'm I'm happy that the agent pointed out the um, the point about the the part about the easement. Uh, easement was also included in the application, and staff are also supportive of that easement regarding hydro. Um, so thank you, Mr. Rowe. Um, in regards to now keeping the accessory structure, in theory, we're okay. The only thing I would want to do is once staff reviewed it, uh, we didn't look at the zoning provisions regarding side yard setback. Um, so there is an angular lot line there, and I would just want the zoning administrators to confirm that that does in fact comply with zoning, um, since we were under the impression that that accessory structure would be removed. So that would be the only other thing I would suggest that we add a condition just to have the zoning um, like confirmed. So that's, I think that's it. I think we're okay. If he's keeping the building, we're okay to remove condition, condition uh, four. Would it be uh, three and four, actually, I believe. Right, three and four, yeah. But as long as we added yeah. the condition to confirm the zoning. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay, does the committee members have any further questions for staff agent? I'm just adding the condition that zoning be verified. Is that correct? Yep, that should be fine. Marcel moves a seconder. Alan will second that. All right, was that Alan? Yep. Thank you, Alan. Okay, all in favor of approval. Adam? Yes. Alan? Yep. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor as well, so that application is approved. The next application is file number BNPL 2022072. It's for 715 12th Concession Road, North Walsingham for Severance, and it's Beth Farms Ginseng Company, Company Limited is the applicant. And I'll ask staff to give the report. Uh, thank you. So through the chair, um, an application has been received to sever our parcel with frontage of 106.8 meters a width of 106 meters, a depth of 48 meters, having an area of um, 5,099 square meters, approximately 1.2 acres, and retaining a parcel having an area of 147 acres, or approximately 59 and a half hectares, as the second dwelling made surplus through farm amalgamation. The application also includes a request to create an easement with the frontage of two meters, a width of two meters, and a depth of 48.152 meters, um, having an area of approximately 96 square meters for the purposes of ensuring that hydro services are maintained for the severed and retained lands. Um, again, the lands are designated agricultural by the OP and zoned agricultural in the zoning bylaw. Staff have reviewed the policies of the PPS official plan and zoning and are consistent that are confident that the um, proposed application is consistent with all the policy documents and are recommending approval subject to the attached conditions. Uh, thank you. Okay, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Is there a member of the public that would speak regarding this application? Uh, yes, uh, Dave Rowe, agent for the for the applicant. Um, what I'd like to raise uh, the condition number three that talks about uh, a uh, and it's actually shown on on the uh, survey that was submitted with the application 
Uh, this would be an existing curb uh, located uh, would be to the west of the uh, of the existing garage. Um, there seems to be uh, the, the curbing does come across uh, onto the lot. We, however, feel this uh, pretty minor and we don't see the need for uh, uh, any alteration of either the sketch or the uh, or the uh, um, or the curbing in that location because it is so minor. Um, we don't have an issue with the uh, uh, confirmation of the uh, zoning provisions. That would be fine. Um, as far as uh, the uh, farm driveway, um, uh, we wouldn't uh, intend to uh, have the driveway encroach onto the lot. So uh, we would ensure that uh, that the uh, farm uh, driveway stayed on the uh, retained lands. Again, I'm not really quite sure how, how staff would want to uh, um, confirm these uh, the, I'm finding with some of these conditions uh, that it gets uh, uh, a bit uh, difficult to know uh, what one has to do to to confirm this but uh, as far as condition number three I, I don't think there's any need to even mention the uh, the concrete curbing and the retaining wall um, as far as the uh, zone provisions for accessory buildings, uh, that would be fine. So I would say if you uh, just uh, uh, got rid of the first sentence on condition number uh, uh, condition number three, that would probably uh, uh, be okay. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I guess the, the other thing is that there is a uh, proposed uh, hydro easement uh, that would uh, provide power uh, to the uh, to the farm property and behind uh, the dwelling itself uh, will uh, receive uh, uh, direct power from the lines out on concession road 12. Okay, thank you. Does staff have any comments regarding the um Removal of the concrete curb and retain all that sentence. Uh, through the chair, yeah. So the um, way that the map is shown on the screen now, where the line between the existing garages and the existing barn, when you go on site, there's actually a driveway that goes right in between there. And that was when we were on site and we were looking at where the proposed line is. We just want confirmation that the proposed property line isn't actually in the center of the driveway that provides access to all of the remaining agricultural buildings in the back. And then also there is a concrete curb that does turn into a bit of a retaining wall. So we just wanted confirmation that, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we want to know where that line is. Like, is that line in the middle of a driveway or is that line along the curb? Um, the recommendation from staff would be to have the curb all on one property. So we would potentially stop any conflict between the agricultural operator and any residential person or person living in the house. Um, so they would just reduce the future conflict between you know residential use and the agricultural operation. Uh, we're not looking to make it super onerous. We're just looking for confirmation. It is shown on the survey. You can see that was submitted. So you can see that the curb intersects slightly. So a small shift in the property line would correct or would satisfy that condition. So it staff's opinion is it's not you know, onerous. Um, you can shift the line slightly just to ensure that the curb is all on one property versus now making it an encroachment. Yeah, I, I think that we we can agree uh, to uh, let's say altering the property line to uh, uh, to follow the uh, the extension of the uh, of the curbing, um, the survey that was provided with the application uh, indicates that the farm driveway is clearly on the farm side, um, and perhaps uh, the surveys uh, should also be included with the staff report because they tend to provide a lot more uh, detailed information than the uh, than the uh, mapping uh, produced by 
in addition to the mapping that's produced by the county. That's just an aside, by the way, so. Okay, thank you. Any uh, further comments or questions from committee members? Okay, if not, uh, staff are recommending approval subject to the attached conditions. Um, ask for committee members to move the recommendation. Rudy moves approval. Okay, thank you, Rudy. Can I have a seconder? Adam. Thank you, Adam. Okay, all in favor of approval, Adam. Yes. Alan? Yeah. Marcel? Yes. Rudy? Yes. And I am as well. So that application is approved. Next application is file number BNPL 2022073. It's Beth Farms Jensen Company Limited, 229 West Quarter Line Road, North Walsingham, and that's severance and I'll ask staff to give the report. Thank you. Thank you. So an application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of 42.5 meters, a width of 42.5 meters, a depth of 48.53 meters with an area of 2,000 square meters and retaining a parcel of 2,000 square meters. Right, that must be anything. Um, as a severance of a dwelling made surplus through farm information. The application also includes a request to create an easement with a frontage of 2.35 meters, a width of 2 meters, a depth of 50.21 meters, with an area of 31 square meters, for the purposes of ensuring hydro services are maintained for the retained and severed um, parcels. So again, uh, we have a property that is designated agricultural by the official plan and zoned agricultural uh, by the zoning bylaw. Uh, staff are of the opinion that the proposed uh, severance is consistent with the policies of the PPS official plan and zoning bylaw and are recommending approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Okay, does any committee members have questions for staff? No questions. Any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Uh, yes, uh, Dave Rowe, uh, agent for the applicant. Uh, I guess the only comment I had is in the uh, preamble on the staff report and for the application uh, to clarify the uh, retained lands approximately uh, 20 hectares, um, roughly 49, 49 acres. Uh, I don't think it, it makes reference to uh, the retained area being uh, 2,000 square meters, which it isn't. It's it's uh, 20 hectares or 49 acres. Other than that, we don't have any any uh, issue. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, does yep, the committee have any, any further questions for the agent? Okay, um, staff are recommending approval. Can I have a member of the committee move that recommendation? Okay. Got Marcel, a seconder. Adam seconds. Thank you, Adam. Okay, all in favor of approval, Adam. Yes. Alan. Alan, are you there? Hey, Marcel. And Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I also approve. So that application is approved. Thank you. Okay, the next application is file number BNPL 2022090. Felix and Hildegard Frick. Uh, Frick. And it's for 871 Norfolk County Road 19 East, Wilsonville. And it's for severance. And I'll ask staff to give the report. Thank you. Through the chair, uh, would it be all right to read the, the severance application and the following one concurrently? Uh, just as a note to committee, there was an error on the reason section in staff reports for both of these files. 
uh, so that section reads that the application is being evaluated through the lot creation policies in the agricultural designation. It should say boundary adjustment. Uh, that boundary adjustment has been part of the public notice summary and the decisions, and it's how we evaluate in the report, which is a typographical error, so my apologies. Um, and the agent has submitted a planning justification report as an attachment number two for both reports. Uh, so regarding BNPL 2022090, an application has been received to sever a parcel having no frontage, a width of 41 meters, a depth of 146 meters, and having an area of 6,070 square meters or 1.5 acres, and retain a parcel having an area of 3.5 acres as a boundary adjustment. The lands to be added to the existing parcel are located immediately um, east of Severing. Regarding BNPL 2022091, an application has been received to Severy parcel having no frontage, a width of 56.6 meters, a depth of 69 meters, and having an area of 3,884 square meters or 0.96 acres and retain a parcel having an area of approximately 39, sorry, 32 acres as a boundary adjustment. It's to be added to the existing parcel located uh, out west of this. For application BNPL 2022-90, subject lands have an area of approximately 5.17 acres fronting onto Arfield County Road 19 East. They are designated and zoned agricultural and are occupied by a single detached dwelling, detached garage, and vineyard. For application BNPL 2022-091, uh, the subject lands are occupied by a single detached dwelling and an apple orchard. They are designated and zoned agricultural with some sections of hazard lands and an overlay of significant woodlands. Both parcels, which are proposing to sever land, are within the Grand River Conservation Authority regulatory boundaries. Due to them intersecting with a regulated, sorry, regulated allowance to a wetland, the GRCA has indicated that the proposed boundary adjustment meets the intent and purpose of Section 3.1 of the PPS. Uh, their comment also notes that since the proposed development is within that regulated allowance to a wetland, any future activity on this regulated portion of the merged lands may be subject to a scoped environmental impact study and or geotechnical study. So regarding planning evaluation, the reason stated in the application for the boundary adjustment is to provide the owner of the benefiting lands uh, primarily space to build an accessory structure to be used for storage on their residential lots. So in the PPS, um, lot adjustments in prime ag areas may be permitted for legal or technical reasons. Which are defined as severances for purposes such as easements, preventions, fees, good claims, and minor boundary concerns, which do not need those. So, planning staff are of the opinion that the reason, which is to increase buildable area for an accessory structure for residential purpose, is not a legal or technical reason. And that further, uh, for both respective applications, 1.5 acre, 0 0.96 acre parcel of land does not constitute a minor boundary adjustment. Um, in my reports, I outlined some additional PPS policies, which revolve around what are called um, agricultural areas. It's agricultural land and uh, class four soils, which lands are class four soils. Um, and areas where there's a concentration of farms, which exhibit characteristics of, of ongoing agriculture. And so kind of section three, two, three, one, and two, three, two of PPS discuss priorities for agricultural areas. Uh, which include protecting them for the long term and using an agricultural system approach, which maintains and enhances the geographic continuity of the agricultural land base and functional and economic connections to the agricultural network. So when we visited on site, we determined that the surrounding farms are growing out as grapes. Um, pumpkins are also distinct from Western parcel. So why you want to learn more from them. So for that reason, we concluded that the proposed application doesn't meet the intent planning after yes on the base doesn't protect agricultural areas for long term and um, this kind of concept is carried through the official plan policy which highlights these read as possible you know section 4.4 talks about the agriculture section 7 
about agricultural land, about you know, preserving rural lands and encouraging uses that unnecessarily take this land out of production. And again, the consent to sever may be considered for technical reasons. So reiterate, you know, proposal to transfer a total of about 2.46 acres of agricultural land, expand a residential lot from 1.9 acres to 3.4 acres for the purpose of residential storage purposes. Um, doesn't really support the policies of the official plan. Then lastly, for the zoning bylaw, there's some sections that talk about where accessory buildings or structures are permitted in the front yard. Permitted doesn't occupy the required front yard. And um, you know, the justification report kind of noted that uh, putting this place, this sorry, this development in the front yard um, would comply with this section of the zoning bylaw. We agree. Um, the lot has about 80 meters uh, front yard setback, so we would think that this idea would be great as an alternative solution for an existing structure there instead of having a minor boundary adjustment that comes to the reduction. Uh, so, in conclusion, due to the reasons outlined above, staff did not find the application BNPL 2022090 to meet conformity with the policy. Yes. And consent to sever policy the official plan, we therefore recommend for refusal. And if the committee does decide to approve, uh, we just think conditions that are not the one. Thank you. I'll be able for uh, questions. Thank you. Do any committee members have questions for planning staff? No questions for staff. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Yes, Madam Chair, this is Adam Moot from Land Pro Planning Solutions. Uh, I'm the agent for the applicant, and I have him here with me as well. Good evening. Okay, go ahead. Um, I also have a presentation. I uh, am I able to share my screen here? I just want to give an overview from uh, from our perspective in response to the report. Okay, thank you. And can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. And everyone can see that? Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to make some uh, comments uh, to open up. So we believe these are two simple applications and they're being viewed as overly complex. Uh, boundary adjustments are one of the most simple planning exercises. Uh, and we, we do respectfully disagree with the planning staff. Uh, they've been very helpful throughout this process, but um, given uh, the same set of information, professionals often can come to two different conclusions uh, with that same information, and I believe that's what has occurred here. So this presentation will give you a brief overview of our perspective on why we believe this is good planning, and afterwards um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and uh, the applicant, Felix, would also be happy to answer any questions specific to his property. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to some of the concerns I have with the staff report. So um, we'll start off with the response to the PPS. So uh, we recognize staff did visit um, the neighboring uh, hobby farm and, and noticed that there was apples, a small plot of grapes and pumpkins are anticipated. Uh, we also recognize that the soils are class four um, and, and the issue we have with that is it's almost as if the, the, the staff looked at it as if it was a flat piece of ground, which is not the case. Uh, there's a, a grade of seven to 15% on these lands uh, which is uh, 8 to 15 meters in elevation change um, with Brant soil, uh, which is representative of a high runoff potential from fertilizer. Um, so that leads into the viability of it actually being farmable land. Um, you know, big corporate farming is what I mean. Uh, hobby farming, as we see with the neighbors, uh, along with what Mr. Frick wants to do in the future, it would be suitable for that. But um, for the, the notion that it could be used for anything more than that, 
um, is, is I think, a stretch. Um, and the GRCA did recognize that there is a slope hazard, so it is there. It's quite apparent. Um, and I'll show you the next slide here. Uh, this is a, a side profile of the back of Mr. Frick's property um, and some of the property that um, you know he's looking to to purchase. Um, you can see how much of a grade there is there. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything specific to this image, Felix. No, it was actually an image I worked for Phil on it since a couple years. It was all overgrown. We cleaned it up in the meantime to make it more usable, farm friendly. We planted all wildflowers in it. Good for wildlife, good for bees. Just to yeah, bring it back up to what it is, where it was let go for years. Yeah. So, you know, just that image demonstrates the, the significant slope there. Um, and, you know, it, in combination with the soil type, it does have a high runoff potential, and that's why um, we do have concerns with any kind of large-scale farming practices, but suitable for hobby farming, uh, no doubt. Um, further to this, so, so zoning provisions, um, staff commented that this is, they believe it's not a technical or legal reason to support uh, the proposed boundary adjustment. Uh, our response is zoning is law, and this is the legal reason that we believe um, permits the boundary adjustment. Further to that, uh, the, the staff believe that this is not a minor boundary adjustment. Uh, respectfully, we do disagree. Um, under the PPS, there is no definition of minor boundary adjustment. Um, so deciding whether uh, this is permissible uh, based on the size of the adjustment is really outside the purview of the PPS. Um, it should not really be used as a determining metric for compliance, uh, which it was in the report. Um, so we had a, a bit of a concern there because it, you know, I'm not sure where the their perspective of minor came from. Um, so that's, you know, one of the challenges I had with the report. Um, <clears throat> moving on, so uh, we're looking at the uh, official plan of the county right now. So as, as I mentioned previously, staff did visit. Uh, they indicated there is cultivation of the proposed lands that are to be transferred. Uh, we make no uh, mistakes about that. Um, the, the report also indicated apples and pumpkins. Um, what I think is at, at issue here is there is going to be no removal of agricultural land from uh, the agricultural designation. Uh, the applicant wants to, yes, use it for personal storage. He also wants to uh, do hobby farming in retirement. When we first started this exercise, uh, he was in the process of uh, finding a buyer for his company. Uh, in between that time uh, and now, which has been, uh, I believe, before Christmas when we started this process, uh, he has successfully sold his company uh, and is now looking towards retirement, which you know obviously includes hobby farming as as uh, as a pastime. So, two staffs uh, specific issues with this. Um, again, the agricultural designation will remain. Um, and it doesn't have to be uh, cultivated or crops that are grown on this land. Uh, many items under the agricultural permitted uses uh, can be used on this property, including a nursery, uh, horticultural crops, or uh, a beekeeping farm, which um, Mr. Frick, uh, you know, any of these could happen. Obviously, you're not going to do uh, fish or, or um, you know, maple syrup on this property, but I'm just showing uh, the committee members that. Uh, we can't be so narrow focused that uh, crops are the only uh, permitted agricultural use uh, under the official plan. Um, and, and to that to that point, um, when looking at that in comparison to the lands that he's looking to transfer to his property, um, there there is a challenge that uh, again we believe is a stretch. So um, there are grapes, and this image here are pictures of the 
vineyards uh, that the, the neighbor has uh, built up. Um, it's a very small scale process. It's, it's very hobby farmish. Uh, more can I can I actually grow grapes? Uh, is this a viable pastime? We don't know. I, I personally don't know. Uh, Mr. Frick has some uh, experience in winemaking, and, and I think he'd like to share some comments at this time. I I know Mark uh, owns the property. He bought his property when there's more grapes on it over the years. Tried to make it work, but where the soil is condition, not that simple. And you know, he never really could make a living out of it. He never really. He knows that in the meantime, learned it also. He never really even could get a winery license because by the law, by the liquor license board, you need five acres to do this. So let's say he would have three acres of grapes or three and a half acres. So he would be forced to sell the wine, either drink it himself or under the table. If you're a really great winemaker, that means it's around 12,000 bottles a year. So... He realized in the meantime, he bought his property, whipped his on it, removed some of the grapes, would like to go ahead and do some planting of some pumpkins, but to be quite honest, as you all know, that costs money. Um, but good for him, good for me, we can buy the land from him to a very fair above market value, so he can do this. Um, have some money to do this, invest into his property, keep going. I look on it, do more do gardening, have some potatoes in for ourselves, and that's what I'm already doing some of my property, but as I'm looking the retirement, I need a shed to store the little tractors, the, just all the accessories, I'm trying to keep it neat and tidy on my, not sitting outside all over the place, which you're more than welcome to stop by and see what we do, so. That's really how we came to that, and as we talked, why we don't go ahead that way. Yeah, and, and thank, thank you. I'm just going to ask you to wrap it up, okay? Because we've got a long meeting here, and we want to get moving on. So, yeah, for sure. Okay, so I only have uh, two more slides left here. So, um, back to the official plans. The staff said they can't support the transfer of 2.46 acres of ag land for residential storage purposes. Uh, in reality. All of that land is not going to be used for storage. In fact, the max uh, permitted is 200 square meters for an accessory structure of this nature. Um, the land will still be agricultural with the goal of having a hobby farm. Um, and, 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 you know, once he is fully in retirement. And uh, this, uh, two more two more items. So, uh, staff did recognize that I did say in my report that, yes, you could put the accessory building in front of the house and that it is good planning right now. Now, what they omitted from the report is my next sentence that uh, putting an accessory uh, building in front of the residence is unsightly and would put the property out of compliance uh, should the uh, hamlet ever get expanded. Uh, what's the likely expansion would be to these properties. There's seven residential properties here all smaller than probably, uh, you know, certainly the 40 hectares that is required in the county for um, agricultural properties or, or, or severances. Um, so the logical extension would go this way. Um, so I just, I, I think that was unfair to keep out, but keep my other comment in. Um, so that is there for that reason. And here's my final thoughts. So these are two simple boundary adjustments. No ag land is going to be removed from the agricultural land base. It's simply a transfer from one farmer to a future farmer. Uh, a boundary adjustment would permit the accessory building, which is a permitted uh, use. And the boundary adjustment would permit Mr. Frick to operate a hobby farm in his, reti in his retirement, which uh, he's quickly nearing. So we do contend this is good planning. And at this time, we'd be happy to answer any questions from the committee. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hey, does the committee have any questions for the agent? Okay, no questions. Any further discussion from the committee? Okay, hearing none. The uh, staff are recommending refusal. 
Uh, so we're going to deal with file BNPL 2022-090 first. And they have a member of the committee move that recommendation. No one's moving the recommendation for refusal. Is there any discussion from the committee? Do we have any guarantees that that isn't going to be subdivided and more houses put on that property? We lock that land out for residential use. Madam Chair, is that a question to us or is that a question to staff? That's a question for staff. Could, uh, could Marcel speak up a bit? I couldn't quite hear the question. Sorry. I just want to have some guarantees that that land won't be uh, more residential uh, units put on that property. Is there a way of the county locking that land out so it can only be used for farm agricultural use? Thank you. Uh, through the chair, if I understand your question, Correctly, if there's a, a guarantee of avoiding any approvals for a consent to sever on the subject lines or the lands to benefit, is that fair? Is that, am I understanding correctly? Am I understanding your question correctly? If there's a way to guarantee that there are no consents, like no further division of land for residential purposes, well, the committee makes that decision for any consent to sever. Um, so for lot creation, we'd be evaluating it through very you know, similar policies. We'd be evaluating to the DPS and the official plan and bylaw. And the DPS and official plan are pretty, in my opinion, pretty clear in terms of not permitting creation, new lot creation. Um, so that's as far as I can really say. I can't guarantee beyond what the committee will approve, but I'd be surprised because it wouldn't be in conformity with the DPS. Uh, I also think this is an important yes, so that's the price again. Madam Chair, can I add to that? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question, Marcel. Unfortunately, there's no way to limit the uses. Once the lot has been expanded, the zoning uh, permitted uses are allowed on the lot and the agricultural area. So in terms of residential uses, we can't restrict any like future residential uses, but they currently have a house. Um, the only way they would be able to get additional residential uses on the property would be through our accessory residential dwelling unit um, policies. So right now they would be allowed one additional unit, but that would be um, permitted now with the size of the lot that he has now. And then it would be permitted with a bigger lot if you approve it moving forward. Um, they would have to, to get more additional residential uses um, on the property. It would have to be redesignated to do that. So. Long answer, we can't guarantee it. Short answer, it's not like. OK, thank you. Um, all right, so we have a um, recommendation from staff for refusal. Does anybody want to make a recommendation or move that recommendation? I will move the staff recommendation. OK, so Alan is moving for refusal. Do I have a seconder? Rudy seconds. OK, hey, Rudy, all in favor? Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? And Rudy? Yes. OK, and I'm in favor as well. So that application is refused. Okay, the next application um, was BNPL 2022091, uh, same property and same recommendation for refusal. Uh, could I have somebody move that recommendation? Again, I will, may, I will move the staff recommendation. Is now exiting. Okay, I've got Alan, a seconder. Rudy seconds. Okay, thank you, Rudy. All in favor, Adam? Yes. Alan? Yeah. Marcel? Hey, Rudy? Yes. Hey, and I'm in favor as well. So that application is refused. 
The next application is for a minor variance, ANPL 2267. Is now exiting. Association Community Living, and it's for 9 Brock Street in Simcoe, and I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. You're the chair, and application has been received to construct. Apologies, we are receiving some feedback. An application has been received to construct a barrier free access ramp requiring relief of 0 0.5 meters and required uh, front yard of 3 meters to permit a projection of 3.5 meters. The subject lands are located east of the intersection of Granada Drive and Brock Street. The area of the subject lands is approximately 647 square meters and are occupied by a single detached dwelling with a wheelchair ramp. Staff have evaluated the proposal through the PPS, Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw, which speak to supporting healthy, safe, and livable communities, active transportation, and the permitted uses and their accessory uses in the urban residential designation and R1G zone. Staff of the opinion the proposal meets the core test of the mine variance and recommend that it be approved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions for planning staff? And is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm David Bennett with uh, Engage Design. I'm the agent for the owner. I just wanted to uh, let the committee know that uh, the, the reason for this variance is, is that uh, we have a non-compliant ramp that is in place in, at this property now, which is actually in, you know, very close to county property. And uh, the whole point of this project is to uh, bring uh, everything up to uh, current AOTA code on this property. Uh, yeah, you can see from those photos that the uh, bottom of that ramp is is uh, in in the county uh, property. So uh, yes, so uh, what we're planning to do obviously is, is uh, bring that bottom leg of the ramp across the property as opposed to uh, down the uh, length of the property to uh, allow it to be uh, more compliant and then tucked up tighter to the front of the house. I'm available for questions if there, anybody has any. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the agent? Okay. We have a recommendation from staff for approval. Could I have a member of the committee move that recommendation? I'll move that. Sorry, was that Alan? Yes. OK, thanks, Alan. And a seconder. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Hey, all in favor of approval. Adam. Yes. Alan. Yes. Marcel. Rudy. Yes. OK, and I am also in favor. So that application is approved. Next application is for a minor variance, ANPL 2022075. Applicant is John Dreiger and it's for 1299 <laughs> North County Road 23 North Walsingham and I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to construct a 40 by 60 foot accessory building requiring relief of 22.97 square meters and maximum permitted usable floor area of 200 square meters uh, to, to permit one of 222.97 square meters. The subject lands are located north of the intersection of 8th Concession Road ENR and North Oak County Road 23, possessing an area of approximately 1.07 acres um, fronting under North Oak County Road 23. They are designated and zoned agricultural with an overlay of significant woodlands and occupied by a single detached dwelling. The proposal is not expected to intersect with these significant woodlands. Staff have received a comment from a neighbor. Uh, I did give them a call and an email to address their concerns and they've confirmed that they would like their comments read at committee since they cannot attend today's meeting. So if it's okay with the chair, I'll proceed with reading their comment. Yep. Uh, so comment one is that the proposed building will be too close to their property boundary and driveway. The second comment is that the proximity to the lot line could easily lead to an encroachment onto their property and unauthorized use of their driveway. And the third comment is that the lot size is over one acre. Uh, therefore, there's lots of space on the property to allow for the accessory building yep. to be located further from their neighbor's lot line. So I discussed with them and we'll again discuss today that the proposal uh, meets the other provisions. The relief request is for usable floor areas, so they meet the uh, 
side yard setback requirements for accessory structures in the agricultural zone. Um, if the development does happen to encroach onto the lot, then it's in non-compliance with the zoning bylaw, and it might be uh, bring up bylaw enforcement. Um, and uh, regarding space, um, again, it meets the zoning provisions for setbacks, so we're staff are satisfied uh, that it meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. Um, it facilitates the continued use of a primary dwelling in the agricultural area and uh, meets the other two tests of minor variance and recommend that it be approved. Thank you Any for questions. Hey, do we have any questions for planning staff? Yes, I just want to confirm that the side setback would be 3.08 meters from the property line. Is that correct? Is that the one that they're concerned about? Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, any further questions for staff? Is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? And is there applicant or agent any additional information to provide? Okay. So we have a recommendation from staff to approve the application. Could I have a committee member move that recommendation? Rudy moves approval. Thank you, Rudy. And seconder. Alan will second that. Hey, Alan. Hey, up in favor. Adam. Yes. Alan. Yes. Marcel. Rudy. Yes. Hey, and I so I'm in favor. So that application is approved. The next application is file number ANPL 202076. It's for a minor variance, Canon Derby G of the owners, and it's for 243 to 245 Main Street in Delphi. I'll staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to construct an existing, uh, sorry, construct a dwelling unit in an existing building. The ground floor of that building requiring relief of 2% of the maximum permitted usable floor area of 50% permit one of 52% for a dwelling unit on the first story of a building in the CBD zone. The subject lands are located north of the intersection of Main Street of Delhi and Wellington Avenue in the urban area of Delhi. The area of the subject lands are approximately 263 square meters, approximately 9.6 meters of frontage on Main Street of Delhi and are occupied an existing commercial building with uh, residential dwellings on the second story. By permitting 52% of the first floor to be occupied by this additional dwelling unit um, inside a building that is existing commercial residential use, I believe the purpose is to uh, meet fire code for Ontario building code requirements. Um, will have the effect of intensifying existing housing stock, support the goal of providing a variety of res residential housing types um, through a minor relief of relief through the zoning bylaw. So staff are of the opinion that this application meets the four tests of minor variance and recommend that it be approved. Thank you. Are there any questions for planning staff? I just have one question and the location of their residence, is it um, in the back building or front on the street? And is there anything in the zoning bylaw that restricts residential units on the, uh, on the street side. Uh, thank you through the chair. I will just confirm. I believe it's zoned CBD. And so within that requirement, um, the zoning provision requires that the four dwelling units in commercial buildings, the back half be residential in nature and then the front half be commercial in nature. So it's maintained in that part of the zoning provision. Thank you. OK, is there any for the public wishing to speak regarding this application? And is there an applicant or agent on the line with any additional information to add? Okay, hearing none, oh, we have a recommendation for approval. Could I have a committee member move that recommendation? OK, Marcel, a second. I can't hear. Seconder. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Okay, all in favor of approval. Adam. Yes. Alan. Yep. Marcel. Rudy. Yes. Okay, and I'm off the 
favor. So that application is approved. This application is ANPL 22208Q. It's Tom Gallacy. And it's for 430 14th Street West. Dave Aiken, Del I Legion. Is and now exiting. It's for a minor appearance. I'll ask uh, staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to construct an addition on an existing attached garage, requiring relief of 1.8 meters from the required 3 meter interior side yard setback permit an interior side yard setback of 1.2 meters. The subject lands are located west of the intersection of Wyndham East Quarter Line Road and 14th Street. The area of the lands is approximately 768 square meters with approximately 18 meters of frontage on 14th Street. As shown in the figure below, the subject lands are occupied by a single detached home, pavilion, pool, pool house, and home gym. The adjacent properties along 14th Street are residential lots of similar size with an agricultural parcel to the north. Uh, staff have evaluated the proposed application through the official plan, PPS, and zoning bylaw, and are, the opinion, are of the opinion that it meets the four tests of a minor variance and recommend that it be approved. Available for questions. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions for planning staff? Okay. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Um, I'm David Bennett with Engage Design. I'm the agent for the owner. I, I don't have anything to, to add except that I'm available for questions if the committee has any. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, there's any questions from the committee? No? Okay. Then we have a recommendation for approval. It, I could have a committee member move that recommendation. Adam. Rudy moves approval. Okay. I got Adam. Rudy, you want a second? I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rudy. All in favor of approval. I got Adam. Yes. Alan. Yep. Marcel. Rudy. Yes. Okay. And I'm also in favor. So that application is approved. The next application is. For minor variance, ANPL 2022086. The owner is Ruth Elizabeth Johnson, and it's for 314 Erie Boulevard in Long Point. And I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. So an application has been received to construct an addition to an existing um, vacation home requiring relief of 4.5. 46% from the maximum permitted lot coverage of 15% to permit uh, lot coverage of 19.5% in the resort residential or RR zone. So as the chair mentioned, the property is located within Long Point. It is designated resort residential by the official plan and zone the same. Um, a portion of the land is also identified as being part of a significant woodlot. However, upon inspection by our forestry staff, they have confirmed that there is no significant woodlot there. So we're confident that the policies regarding the natural heritage system are being met uh, in the, from the official plan. Um, staff have also assessed the uh, Lakeshore Special Policy Area Secondary Plan Community Design Guidelines and feel that the proposed relief is consistent with those guidelines. So that being said, staff are confident that the four tests outlined by the Planning Act for a minor variance um, are being met here. The intent of the official plan is being met. The intent of the zoning bylaws being met. The proposed development is appropriate for the lot and the proposal is minor in nature. Therefore, we are recommending approval of the application. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for planning staff? Okay, no questions. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Uh, yes, my name is Ruth Johnson and I'm the owner and I appreciate and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have a, most, a recommendation from staff for approval. Could I have a member of the committee move that recommendation? Alan, I'll move that. Okay, thank you, Alan. A seconder? Adam. Thank you, Adam. All in favor of approval, Adam. Yes. 
Allen. Yes. Marcel. Rudy. Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor, so that application has been approved. Next application is for a minor variance. It's for applicants Michael and Rebecca Vandendrishi, and it's at 1356 12th Concession Road in Langton. And I will ask staff to give that report. Uh, thank you. So an application has been received to construct an addition to an existing single detached dwelling requiring relief of from the required front yard setback of 13 meters to permit a setback of 9.6 meters in the agricultural zone. Um, so the property is designated agricultural in the official plan and zoned agricultural in the zoning bylaw. Staff have reviewed the policies um, and consider the minor variance um, appropriate and recommend approval. Hey, okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? And is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Okay. Then uh, we have a recommendation for approval. Could I have a committee member move that recommendation? Rudy moves approval. Okay, I got Marcel and Rudy. Do you want to second that? Sure, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Rudy. Hey, all in favor. Adam? Yes. Alan? Alan? Sorry, yes. Yep. Okay, uh, Marcel and Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor, so that application is approved. Next application is for minor variants, ANPL 2022093. Applicants are Mark and Robin Leffler, and it's for 35 Douglas Street in Port Dover, and I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to permit release of 0 0.23 meters and the minimum required frontage of 5 meters to permit a frontage of 4.78 meters. The purpose of this application is to facilitate a deeming bylaw application. Uh, which will combine the subject lands with an unopened roadway that the county is selling to the owners. The subject lands are located west of the corner of Cottage Lane and Douglas Street. The lot is situated on a hill which abuts Black Creek in Port Dover. The area of the subject lands is approximately 750 square meters, um, with currently approximately 12 meters of frontage on Douglas Street, which transitions into that unopened roadway effectively creating a dead end street. The lands are designated urban residential and hazard land um, and zoned R1A and hazard land with a special provision 14.534, which permits a minimum frontage of five meters. So in my report, I've included a picture of the R plan, um, which probably describes how the proposed lot configuration will change for the zoning bylaw. Um, so effectively changes the existing frontage of 12 meters into a frontage of 4.78 meters. Therefore, that's why the application is seeking the relief of 0 0.23 meters. With all that said, um, we've evaluated the proposal across the four tests and minor variants and are of the opinion it meets these four tests and recommend it for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Okay. We have a recommendation from staff for approval. I have a committee member move that recommendation. Alan moves approval. Okay, thank you, Alan. I have a seconder. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Hey, okay, all in favor of approval. Adam. Yes. Thank you. Uh, through the chair. So to kind of explain which severance is which, BNPL 2022-031 facilitates the first severance, which divides 1077 from 1079. Um, so roughly we'll have a area of 1,800 square meters and retain a parcel having an area of 1,059 square meters. Application BNPL 2022-032 facilitates the severance between a semi-detached dwelling uh, located at 1077 Bay. And similarly, 20 BNPL 2022-033, this facilitates the last severance between the other some touch dwelling located at 1079. 
So the subject lands are located directly west of the intersection of Bay Street and John Street in the urban area of Port Rowan. Um, currently today, the area of the lands are approximately 2,144 square meters uh, with approximately 43 meters of frontage on Bay Street. They are currently occupied by a semi-detached dwelling and accessory structure. Following confirmation from the general manager, environmental and infrastructure services, that there is sufficient servicing capacity for the proposed two semi-detached dwellings. Um, this was outlined in a prior zoning bylaw amendment application, uh, ZMPL 2021-258, uh, which was passed, uh, which consequently removed a holding provision. Um, and an agent has submitted a planning justification report in attachment two. Um, a site visit determined that there was an accessory structure on the subject lands, which would effectively intersect multiple par parcels, which are proposed to be created. So a condition of the severance from planning would be that this is removed and a survey is submitted confirming that the severed and retained parcels for all of these severances are in accordance with all zoning provisions. Um, otherwise, staff consider the subject application to be consistent with the policies of the PPS conform to the official plan as it relates to consent to sever policies and the urban residential designation, including that servicing piece. We support this application and recommend that it be approved subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Okay, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay, and is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? And is there an applicant or agent on the line that, with any additional information they would like to add? Hi there. Uh, yeah, this is Mitchell Baker, uh, planner with Land Pro Planning Solutions, uh, acting as the agent uh, representing uh, Don Field and Sons Construction. Uh, we offer we offer no additional comment, but just wanted to uh, thank county staff for the uh, thorough overview uh, as we're in support of their recommendation. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to start with um, BNPL 2022031, and we have a recommendation for approval. Can I have a committee member move that? And I got Marcel as a mover and a seconder. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Okay, all in favor? Adam. Yes. Alan. Yeah. Marcel. Hey, Rudy. Yes. Hey, and I'm also in favor. So that application is approved. The next one is BNPL 2022032. We have a recommendation. Approval and committee member move that recommendation. Rudy moves approval. We got Rudy and need a seconder. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Okay, all in favor? Adam? Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel? Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor, so that application is approved. The last application is BNPL 2022033, and we have a recommendation from staff for approval. I need the committee member to move that recommendation. I got Marcel, a seconder. Alan. Hey, Alan, thank you. All in favor? Adam. Yes. Alan? Yes. Marcel and Rudy? Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor. That application is approved. And that concludes all the applications for tonight. Is there any other business that the committee has? Hi all, I just want to uh, let everybody know, so we are allowed to come back in house to uh, meet uh, on our regular Wednesday meetings. So you're welcome to come into council chambers um, and a public is allowed to come in as of June. So we're getting somewhat back to normal. So I hope to see all your faces next month. We have a busy month ahead of us, another 23 applications coming forward. So another busy meeting. So hope to see you all next month. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Okay, so it is now 7.15 and I have a motion that the committee 
adjourns and meets again at the next regular session to be held Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. Can I have a member move that recommendation? I got um, Marcel. <laughs> I'll Here. second that one. Alan, all right. So all in favor of adjournment, Adam. Absolutely. Yes. Alan? Yeah. Marcel and Rudy. Yes. Okay, and I'm also in favor. So we are adjourned at 7.15 p.m. And, Good night, everybody. Uh, see you all next month. Thank you.